Uh, hello everyone, uh, very good evening. I guess most of you attended the lecture yesterday as well. So yesterday we covered basics of economy, ba not the basics rather, some important questions of economy and the current affairs uh, quiz or questions from the months of June and July 2016. And today the topic that I'll be uh, taking up important questions from is Indian polity. And later on, we'll take a current affairs quiz. We'll see important questions from the month of August and September 2016. So again, the instructions remain the same as yesterday. Uh, I'll admit your questions. I'll respond to your questions first round at 7 o'clock, then at 7.30. And then the remaining questions I'll answer at the end of the class. Again, there is no time limit to that particular question round. And uh, make sure you have your pen and paper ready at hand. Uh, take snapshots of the screen as much as many times as you want, uh, want to as is possible for you guys right and also very importantly make sure there are no distractions around you because again today is also going to be a very content heavy session so I don't want you to getting losing your focus during the course of this lecture right so first is Indian polity let's just first understand <coughs> what Indian polity entails right so as far as Indian polity is concerned so there are through two broad areas from which questions are asked right first of course is the constitution of India now, in this case you can be asked questions related to various articles for example part 3 fundamental rights part 4 DPSP or directive principles of state policy some important later articles like article 368 amendment to the constitution various kinds of emergencies national emergency uh, president's rule financial emergency and the relevant articles of course when you talk about the constitution the schedules are also very important some of the important ones are of course uh, schedule 7 which contains the lists of uh, center state and concurrent lists schedule 10 which contains anti-defection laws so on and so forth and the next part is Indian political system so this is a very broad based topic right you may be asked questions related to what exactly does democracy mean sovereign socialist secular meaning of these particular terms India has a parliamentary form of system as against presidential form of system which is exists in USA so what are the critical points uh, regarding these concepts so on and so forth now, as far as Indian polity is concerned, this particular section is very, very important, especially if you're preparing for CLAT, right? Because firstly, you'll get questions as far as your GK section is concerned. You may expect questions in a wide range from 2 to 10 questions, right? So you might get very few questions or a large uh, number of questions in the GK section and also a strong polity, especially constitution would help you in tackling a large number of questions as far as your legal aptitude or legal section in CLAT is concerned not just CLAT but also other law entrance examinations furthermore for uh, for the others who are preparing who are not preparing or who are not targeting uh, CLAT as such or law entrances as such Indian polity also forms a very important part of exams uh, related to hotel management and BBA so on and so forth right so let's just begin with Indian polity so the format remains the same as yesterday I'll be taking up a number of questions number of important questions that I've uh, picked out which are important for your exams which contain a large number of concepts as such right so uh, I'll be reading out the question. I'll be giving you about two or three seconds. That is ample amount of time to know uh, to see a GK question or to attempt a GK question. And then later on, I'll be pointing out the correct answer to you and explaining certain relevant concept wherever it is relevant. Right. So first question is, which one of the following is not included in Article 19 of the Constitution of India? So Keshav. Okay, almost all of you have got this answer correct. The answer, of course, is right of minorities to establish and administer educational institutions. Article 19 is related to right to freedom. It contains six rights. One of, uh, 
some of them are right to reside and settle in any part of the territory of india right to form associations and right to assemble peaceably without arms of course this particular right is not part of article 19 and it's included in cultural and educational rights article 25 yes case of article 25 so uh, next one is which of which one of the following is the largest in terms of area lok sabha constituency this is a fairly easy one okay the in fact uh, the current correct answer is ladakh ladakh in the state of jammu and kashmir highest by area but very sparsely populated next ndma that is national disaster management authority has been established by the government of india under the ministry of yes uh, you guys are right the answer of course is home ministry or mha ministry of home affairs right so ndma is a premier organization in the country which is tasked for coordinating the disaster responses to various natural disasters or man made disasters in the country ndma was formed under the disaster management act which was passed in 2005 now the prime minister of india is the ex officio chairperson of ndma okay next a fairly easy one again which one of the following is not a constitutional body okay you are absolutely right niti aayog this was formed in the year 2014 it replaced the planning commission which was also a, a non constitutional body all the other bodies upsc election commission finance commission are of course they have provisions in the constitution election commission for example is related to article 324 finance commission the provisions are given in article 280 next is which one of the following fundamental rights is also available to a foreigner on the soil of india yes somik has the correct answer the answer of course is option number 4 protection of life and personal liberty against action without authority of law this is of course a very very important article in our constitution article 21 next a candidate for election to the lok sabha starts to forfeit his security deposit if he or she fails to get at least yes aditya has the right answer the correct answer is 1/6 of the total valid votes polled in a particular elections right so in order to curb uh, people who are non serious candidates the uh, election commission takes a security deposit so in lok sabha constituencies anyone who is standing for lok sabha elections has to submit rupees 10000 and as far as legislative assembly elections are concerned 5000 rupees are to be deposited by all the Uh, candidate standing for elections right so if any candidate gets less than 1/6 of the total votes polled then this particular amount is not refunded for other candidates of course this amount is refundable next the words socialist secular were added to the preamble to the indian constitution right yes absolutely right this is a fairly easy question again the 42nd amendment act the year of course was 1976 the 42nd amendment act is also known as a mini constitution of india because of the far reaching changes that it introduced this was of course during the time of prime minister indira gandhi later on in 1977 the bendik indian national congress lost and the janata party came into power 44th amendment act was passed in 1978 and it reversed a large number of changes as were introduced in the 42nd amendment act in 1976 next the president may refer a matter to the supreme court for its opinion thereon the provisions are contained in the answer of course is article 143 of the constitution the president of india may direct any legal query of national importance or which is of constitutional importance to the supreme court for its opinion on that particular matter the provisions are given in article 143 next article 356 of the constitution deals with article 356 in fact is yes somik has the right answer related to imposition of president's rule in a state now as far as emergencies are concerned there are three types of emergencies given in the constitution of india first one is national emergency this is article 352 Now, national emergency can be imposed in the country 
due to two reasons first is war or external aggression that means a foreign power attacks our country the second is armed rebellion only these two reasons national emergency can be proclaimed the second emergency that we that is relevant to this particular question is president's rule article 356 now this is imposed on a particular state when there is a breakdown of constitutional machinery what does that mean that means that the state the concerned state can no longer function as per the provisions of the constitution of india right so this is imposed by the president of india and next third one is financial emergency this is under article 360 of our constitution now under this a financial emergency is proclaimed by the president of india in case there is a grave threat to the financial stability of our country right so as far as financial emergencies are concerned it has not been imposed ever in the history of our country next the supreme court can be removed from his office by okay now this is a very very tricky question uh, all of you are answering impeachment now the term impeachment okay sumiran so finally gets it right the correct answer is the president's order the term impeachment is, as far as the constitution is concerned is only used in case of uh, the president if the president has to be removed that process is known as impeachment the article that i'm talking about that is removal of president is of course article 61 as far as supreme court or high court judges are concerned right and high court judges the procedure is the same the power to remove a supreme court or high court judge lies with the parliament and eventually the parliament recommends the removal of the uh, president uh, of of a supreme court or a high court judge under the provisions of article 124 clause 4 right so when such a resolution is passed in both the houses of the parliament that goes to the uh, president and the final and finally the president remove orders the removal of a supreme court or a high court judge as far as impeachment is concerned that is only for the president of india for the removal of supreme court and the high court the term that is used in the constitution is simply removal aditya the uh, same procedure exists for all supreme court judges including the chief justice of india next i have already answered this particular question article 352 deals of course it deals with national emergency next the rajya sabha consists of no as far this is a tricky question again as far as our constitution is concerned it gives the maximum strength of rajya sabha as 250 members of which the president of india nominates 12 members from the various fields like social service sciences etc right however in reality in practice the total strength of rajya sabha is today 245 which includes the 12 nominated members next of the following statements which one is not correct yes this is a fairly again easy question money bills originate in the rajya sabha money bills can only be tabled in the lok sabha and not the rajya sabha next what is zero r okay surbhi uh, the answer was option number 2 money bills originate in rajya sabha so what is zero r okay somik has the right answer when any matters of importance of national importance are raised so as far as uh, a working day of the parliament is concerned both houses rajya sabha and lok sabha they have a common uh, pattern so the first r when they start is the question r i just uh, get back to the previous slide after i explain this so the first r is the question r in this or any member of a of the parliament can ask or put questions to the uh, relevant minister or any kind any ministry so there are two types of questions one one type is starred and another type type is unstarred so as far as starred questions are concerned 
the minister is supposed to answer them orally right oral answer is to be given and also since the answer is been given orally the person who is asked the question can ask supplementary questions as well right so as far as unstart questions are concerned a written reply is given and of course when a written reply has been given no supplementary questions are allowed so this is the first half next another important art that is part of our question is zero hour it is usually held at 12 noon so that is why it is known as zero hour over here all the parliamentarians are free to raise any issue of national importance during this particular time period okay next question which of the following features makes our constitution unitary so again as far as constitutions are concerned there are uh, two divisions right so one is a federal type of constitution and another one is unitary in a federal type of constitution there is a clear separation of power or division of power between center and state units they run parallel to each other so as far as unitary government is concerned there is only one government that is the central government no concept of state government exists or there is no division of powers between the between center and states right so this particular question is somewhat trickily written right so which of the following features makes our constitution unitary so when whenever there is an emergency that is declared which may be president's rule or national emergency or financial emergency our constitution considers it as an extraordinary situation and in that situation all the powers of the state governments they are transferred to the central government so as a matter of fact in an ordinary situation indian constitution is a federal one but in an extraordinary situation like a national emergency our constitution transforms into a unitary constitution next which of the following nations is not a member of sarc so zenith has the right answer answer of course is mauritius right so sarc is south asian association for regional cooperation this organization was founded in 1985 it currently has eight members the latest one is of course afghanistan next a question from another important organization which of the following countries is not a member of the nuclear supply group nsg yes obviously the answer is iran right now nsg nuclear supplier group was formed in 1974 and you will be surprised to know nsg was formed only after or only to contain nuclear proliferation after india tested its first nuclear weapon in 1974 right so the basic idea of nuclear supply group is to control the exports and import of uh, material related to nuclear energy production next mark the correct match of public programs with the concerned ministry let's just take each uh, major program one by one manrega of course is mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme so that is related to rural development jnnu rm it is an old scheme right which expired in 2014 so this is related to jawaharlal nehru national urban renewal mission right this was of course related to ministry of urban development rhm is rural health mission related to health and family welfare and then iay is indira awas yojana uh, that is point number Two. So option number first is the correct answer. Next, Human Development Report is published by which of the following organizations or agencies? Zenith, uh, is there a doubt? No option is matching. Okay. All right. Of course, this yeah, this should be, I believe, four and one, two, three. So there is wrong. The options have been printed wrongly. Yes. Okay. Now is it clear? So I think Hena has already answered this particular question. Let's take it up. Clear. The answer, of course, is. UNDP that is United Nations Development Program so human development report that is HDR is published annually by UNDP it contains the ranking of all the countries across the world in terms of HDI that is 
Human Development Index. Now this report was started, the first report, HDI report was published in 1990 and the concept of HDI was developed by two prominent uh, economists. First one of course is Mehboob Ulhaq and uh, next is India's Amartya Sen. Right? Mehboob Ulhaq is of course from Pakistan. Right? Next, Parliament enjoys legislative powers over subjects in, again another tricky question, the answer to this particular one is both union and concurrent list. Some of you might be thinking, yes, the ans answer should be four. Yes, the parliament can legislate on state list as well, but only in case of extraordinary situations like national emergency. In, in a question like this, we will consider only ordinary situation. Right. Next, which is the highest civilian award in India? Okay, It's a fairly easy question. Bharat Ratna. Next, who among the following has not been a vice president of India before becoming the president of India. Again, you might expect these kind of historical come polity questions, right? So the answer of course is Gyani, Zail Singh, all the others were pre vice presidents before they became the president. Next, which of the following is a financial inclusion plan? This is a fairly easy question. That's absolutely right. Answer of course is the Jandhan Yojana, of course launched in 2014, a huge drive conducted to open no frills bank accounts of a large number of Indians almost 30 crore accounts opened since 2014 right so Bharat Nirman is of course related to development of rural infrastructure Swachh Bharat as the name suggests is related to cleanliness and to end the practice of open defecation in India by October 2nd 2019 Prime Minister Rozgar Yojana is a rural program for generating uh, employment. Manrega, we already know about it, guarantees employment of 100 days across the country in rural areas for doing manual work and creation of rural infrastructure. Next, yes, the preamble declares India as a sovereign state, which implies, yes, the answer is very clear. India is free to conduct her internal as well as external affairs, right? So without any influence from another nation, that is what uh, the term sovereign means. So the preamble contains a few very important terms. Let's just look at that first. India is a sovereign, socialist, secular and democratic republic, right? So I hope the meanings of all these terms are very clear to you. So for the purpose of census 2001, which one of the following was taken as being literate? So what was the condition prerequisite for being considered a literate person? Now the answer to this one is option number two, a person aged nine years and above who can both read and write with understanding in any language. Next is article one of the Indian constitution declares India that is Bharat is a, yes absolutely right. The article one says India that is Bharat is a union of states right so this is a very critical point the term what does the term union mean now although india is a federal polity right however still the term federal has not been mentioned in our constitution in any provision right so the term federal does not occur in our constitution in in its place the term union is figured right in the first article of our constitution Next is who presides over the joint sitting of both houses of parliament. Yes, Somik has the right answer. Speaker of Lok Sabha. Now, uh, joint sitting is a special provision of our constitution given under article 108. So, the president calls for a joint sitting when there is a political deadlock between Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Joint sitting can be called only in cases of ordinary bills, amendment constitution amendment bill as well as finance bills right and this is the the joint sitting is presided over by the speaker of the Lok Sabha a joint sitting cannot be called in case of a money bill next question which is the only state in India to have common civil code in force a punkage no uh, no joint sitting in case of emergency only in case of non money bills and uh, due to political deadlock 
Yes, which is the only state in India to have a common civil code in force. The answer, yes, Keshav has it right, is Goa. Right, so there is a lot of discussion on having a uniform civil code. The only state to have a common or a uniform civil code, that is common uh, civil laws for all the religions is Goa. Next, the word Satyamev Jayate in the state emblem of India have been adopted from which one of the following uh, documents? Again, a very fairly straightforward question. The answer, of course, is Mundak Upanishad. Mundak Upanishad is part of our ancient uh, Hindu texts and it occurs in the Atharva Ved or the latest Ved or the fourth Ved. Right? Of course, the term Satyamev Jayate stands for Truth Alone Triumphs. Next. The five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council are again a fairly straightforward question. The answer is to China, France, Russia, USA and UK. So that brings us to the end of questions on polity. I'll take uh, your doubts or any questions that you, or queries that you might have. Yes guys, any questions before we move forward? Okay, uh, Pankaj, I'm not very sure. I'm not very sure of the article but I think it is... Uh, Article 45, but you please please confirm it. I'm not very sure of the exact article. Uh, Hena asks, what did you say about mini constitution in question 7? So, Constitution Amendment Act, uh, 42nd Constitution Amendment Act is also known as mini constitution because it, it introduced a large number of changes in the constitution of India. Right? Any other questions? Please please confirm about uniform civil code. If you have your phones nearby, which I'm sure you do, Please check it right now and confirm in this class. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, Hena, I hope uh, you've confirmed it from the internet. It's Article 54, 44. Okay. So, Article 44 it is. Uh, Uniform Civil Code. Great. Okay. Any other questions before we move forward? Alright. Thank you so much, Pankaj, for uh, permitting me to proceed. Okay. Let me proceed. Again, uh, we, I'll take up important questions from the months of in case of current affairs in months of August and September. So, who among the following was in August 2016 selected for the Rajiv Gandhi National Sad Bhavna Award for his or her outstanding contribution towards the promotion of communal harmony, peace and goodwill? Yes, the answer is correct. Uh, Shubha Mudgal, right? She is a vocalist or a singer. Next, in August 2016, the board of directors at which company reappointed Pawan Munjal as the Chairman, Managing Director and CEO of the company for a period of 5 years with effect from 1st of October 2016. Right, of course Munjals are a very famous, uh, is a very famous name uh, in the Indian business circles. They are from the Hero Motor Corp Group. Next. Which of the following was constituted in August 2016 consequent to India's ratification of the WTO Agreement on Trade Facilitation to facilitate domestic coordination and implementation of TFA provisions? Right? Answer again is National Committee on uh, Trade Facilitation. So, Trade Facilitation Agreement is a huge achievement by the WTO members. It is the first major agreement signed by WTO. Right? Now, what this allows is the standardization of documents related to import and export or trade all across the world. So, that would save a lot of cost and effort for importers and exporters across the world. In August 2016, the Reserve Bank of India set up a committee to look at the various facets of household finance in India and to benchmark the country's position vis-a-vis -vis both peer countries and advanced countries the committee will be chaired by okay i'm afraid your guesses are not working in this case in this question so the answer is tarun ramadurai so pankaj is asking when will i discuss latest current affairs of 2017 uh, pankaj i'm taking two months at a time uh, of current affairs and i'll be covering the current affairs for the entire year during these lectures so, th at the end of the, this five part series, we will be taking up the uh, latest current affairs of 2017. But these are equally important for your papers, uh, the, the months that I am discussing right now. 
Okay, next in August 2016, Pushp Kumar Dahil was elected as the 39th Prime Minister of which country? Again, a fairly simple uh, question. The answer, of course, is Nepal. Next, uh, Mr. Takehiko Nakao was in news in August 2016 as he was appointed as the president of which organization for a further five years, beginning on November 2016? Yes, Keshav, Aditya, and Swamik have the right answer. The answer, of course, is Asian Development Bank. Now, who created history in 2016 by becoming the first Indian gymnast to qualify for the apparatus finals of artistic gymnastics at Rio 2016 Olympics? Again, very straightforward question, but very, very important for your papers, right? The answer, of course, is Deepa Karmakar, and she belongs to the Indian state of Tripura. Next, Deepika Palikar of India won the prestigious Australian Open when she defeated Mayor Hani of Egypt in August 2016. Which sport is being talked about? Again, most of you have the correct answer. Deepika Palikar is India's uh, number one in squash. Next, who led the Indian contingent in the Olympic Games or opening ceremony in August 2016? Okay, most of you know this answer as well. Abhinav Bindra. Next, National Sports Award were given in various categories in August 2016. One of these awards is the Nash Rajiv Gandhi Na Khel Ratna Awards award given for the spectacular and most outstanding performance in the field of sports by a sports person over a period of how many years? Answer in this case is yes, Aditya has the right answer. Four years in case of Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna Award. Next, who among the following won the UEFA Best Player in Europe award in August 2016. Seems a lot of you are football fans. You got the answer right. This is of course Cristiano Ronaldo of Portugal. Next, which cement company was acquired by Birla Corporation Limited in August 2016 for 4800 crores rupees? The answer in this case is Reliance Cement Company Private Limited. In August 2016, Union Minister Menka Gandhi launched protection of children from sexual offences POCSO e-box up to which age is an individual recognized as a child under the POCSO Act 2012. As far as POCSO Act is concerned, any person below the age of 18 years is considered a child. Next, in August 2016, the Union Government launched Sugamya Pustakale, right, online library to serve which category of people? Okay, Pankajan Keshav Aditya Surbhi. Now, all of you have the right answer is, of course, option number four, persons with visual disability. The term Sugamya, of course, stands for easily accessible. Pustakale stands for library. Next, in August 2016, the Union Cabinet approved the scheme for grant of permanent residency status, PRS, to foreign investors for a period of how many years with multiple entries? Uh, the correct answer, of course, is 10 years. So, businessmen, foreign investors can get a visa of 10 years, with, including uh, multiple entries, as per the latest uh, scheme called permanent residency status. Next, which two states signed an MOU in August 2016 to build three barrages for water utilization of River Godavari and its tributaries. Okay, Sema has the right answer for this particular question. The answer, of course, is Telangana and Maharashtra. In August 2016, country's largest paramilitary force, that is CRPF, announced the appointment of Dash of which person as its brand ambassador. Okay, so guys, let me finish the question and bestowed the honorary rank of commandant on the player. So, you have the right answer. This is, of course, our badminton star PV Sindhu. Next, of course, the question is National Sports Day was observed on which date to mark the birth anniversary of the legendary hockey player Dhyan Chand? The answer, of course, most of you have got it correct August 29, 2016. Next, who of the following is the author of the book I Want to Be Tendulkar? So, this particular book has been recently launched and it was written by Mr. Manish Sharma. In August 2016, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced a decision to set up a task force to prepare action plans for how many future Olympic Games. 
the correct answer is option number 4 that is for the next 3 games so he is inducted a number of prominent sports personalities to ensure that India performs better in the upcoming 3 uh, Olympic games in a significant decision that could have far reaching implications for India's military posture India and which other country agreed in principle on a logistics support agreement logistics exchange memorandum of agreement that is LEMOA in August 2016 the correct answer to this particular question is USA now LEMOA is a very very important agreement that USA has signed with a number of its uh, partners across the world as far as this agreement is concerned both the countries now will allow the use of their military infrastructure for example uh, airfields or military bases right so US planes can use uh, military bases in India however only for the purpose of human uh, for managing humanitarian crisis for example in case there is a natural disaster so a prominent example can be uh, we saw a huge earthquake uh, a couple of years ago in Nepal a large number of countries were sending their assistance humanitarian uh, aid and assistance to Nepal now India being the closer closest country as far as Nepal is concerned now if this agreement would have been signed then then American planes military planes could have landed on our bases to provide humanitarian assistance over there right so it is only a sharing of military infrastructure and bases only in case of assuaging or uh, re uh, reducing losses due to humanitarian crisis like natural disasters next of course which of the following pairs represents the two Indians nominated for the prestigious Magsaysay award in September 2016 the answer is option number one Mr. B. Wilson and T. M. Krishna now Magsaysay award is a very important award given out by the government of Philippines in memory of a former president Mr. Wilson is a social activist and he's worked in the field of uh, or, or to eradicate work hard to eradicate uh, manual scavenging throughout the country and T.M. Krishna is a prominent Carnatic music singer next this Assam based ecologist and conservation activist won the prestigious heritage heroes award of the international union for conservation of nature thus becoming the first Asian right, first Asian to win this prestigious environmental award name the person of course all the four people are important social activi activists and environmental activists but this particular award was won by Bibhuti Laika he is mainly based in Assam okay in September 2016 media firm Sony Pictures Networks India signed a definitive agreement to acquire which other sports channel for 385 million dollars so you've got the correct answer good that you've been following corporate general knowledge and business GK as well the answer of course is 10 sports next in September 2016 the union cabinet approved the extension of contract between Ministry of Earth Sciences Government of India and the ISA for the exploration of polymetallic nodules for a further period of five years that is 2017-22 the question is what does ISA stand for okay the answer is international seabed authority now whenever you you come across an organization for example international seabed authority make sure you open its wikipedia page note down a few details for example the year of its establishment headquarters and what is the main function of that particular organization right so polymetallic nodules are found on the seabed uh, they are related to again metallic nodules or small chunks of metals found on the seabed Pankaj uh, let's take up how to prepare these kind of questions at the end of our lecture right so uh, note down your query I'll answer it after we are uh, over with this lecture in September 2016 the income tax department launched a special electronic grievance redressal system in order to fast track ta taxpayer grievances and ensure early resolution of their complaints what is this system called absolutely right e Nivaran is the correct answer which of the following in September 2016 became the first foreign government issuer of masala bonds 
So now, so those of you who attended the lecture yesterday already know what masala bonds are. Which foreign government first uh, issued the such bonds? The answer, as most of you have answered correctly, that is British Columbia. Next, in September 2016, eminent economist, consultant, and banker Dr. Urjit Patel assumed the charge as the dash governor of the Reserve Bank of India. Yes, again, most of you I see have been preparing very well as far as current affairs are concerned. The answer, of course, is 24th governor of the Reserve Bank of India. Right. So, uh, since it's 7.30, I'll be happy to take up uh, questions from you. Yes, any questions as far as GK preparation is concerned? Question number 43. So, Jovan Preet is asking, Sir, from where do we read legal GK? Uh, Jovan, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not the right person to be answering this question. You'll be having special legal aptitude uh, related sessions taken by our legal faculty. So again, you can ask, you can pose this question to her. So Pankaj is asking, should I learn business and banking related current affairs if I am law and entrance aspirant? Yes, Pankaj, I'm afraid you'll have to read this too. Yes, because you can expect questions from business and corporate GK in CLAT, ILIT or other SET law, these type of exams. Pankaj, again, uh, I have to apologize. We are not sharing this document with our students uh, not because of any other reason but only because uh, generally students you know collect more and more material and avoid reading them so I want you to uh, stay focused on this particular uh, presentation if you re if you go through it uh, once with me then you'll be able to do fine you won't need a revision later on and anyways, you can revise this particular uh, video lecture or session when we put up put this video up on our uh, YouTube channel. Okay, so now we have permission from Zenith to proceed. So, proceed we shall. Okay, in September 2016, Deepa Malik created history by winning silver medal in women's dash. That is, which event does she take part in? At the Rio 2016 Rio Paralympics, thus becoming the first Indian woman to win a medal at the Paralympics. Okay, great. Most of you have got this particular answer correct. She's a very, very famous personality in India. Ms. Deepa Malik, very, very inspir inspirational. Uh, so, she is uh, involved in short part. So, the names of some other uh, gold medal or medal winners as far as Paralympics were concerned. First, we had Mariappan Thingavalu, right? He was a gold medal winner in high jump, right? Next, we had Mr. Devendra Janjariya, right? He again won the gold medal in javelin throw. Next, we had Mr. Varun Singh Bhatti, who won the bronze medal in high jump, men's high jump, right? So, Mariappan won the gold medal, Varun won the bronze medal and Mr. Jajariya won gold in javelin throw and Miss Deepa Malik won the silver medal in short part. Pankaj, uh, Jovan, uh, these, are, these are the four medals that India won, right? So, I hope you noted down these details. Let me move forward. Okay. In September 2016, Dash became the first country to be officially acknowledged as being yours free right yours is a type of skin disease right and the cause is a type of bacteria yours free by the who the answer is of course india again i'm sure most of you know the answer to this particular question what is the name of the mobile chat application launched by google in september 2016 that can be used in online conversations with friends answer of course is hello right so arrival to uh, whatsapp uh, kind of applications. Who among the following was in September 2016 appointed as the brand ambassador of state-owned Punjab National Bank? Again, a fairly easy question, this one as well. Yes, so you must be seeing him in ads of PNB. He is, of course, the Indian captain, Virat Kohli. Next, in September 2016, the union cabinet gave its ex post facto approval for the Varist, Varist Pension Bima Yojana, launched in July 20, 2003. 
and Varishth Pension Bima Yojana launched in August 2014. The schemes are implemented through which organization? Okay. The answer of course is LIC, Life Insurance Corporation. Varishth, the term in Hindi stands for senior, right? So these are uh, schemes for the social security of people above the age of 60 years. So what was India's rank on the Global Competitive Index released by the World Economic Forum in October 2016? So Meera and Aditya have the right answer. Answer is 39. So World Economic Forum releases the Global Competitive Index report. Right. This is also an important fact. Next, former Prime Minister and President of which country, Mr. Shimon Perez, passed away at the age of 93 in September 2016? Answer, of course, is Israel. Shimon Perez was a very popular President and Prime Minister of Israel. Next, in September 2016, Senior IS Officer Mr. Arun Goyal was appointed as Additional Secretary in the Goods and Services Tax GST Council. Who is the head of the council? Again, a very, a very, very simple question. Most of you are getting it correct. Is Mr. Arun Jaitley, that is the finance minister of India. Next, India opened their medal account in the fifth Asian Beach Games in September 2016 with Pinky Balhara bagging a bronze in Kurash on the opening day of the competitions. What is Kurash? Some of you have the correct answer. It is a form of wrestling that originated from the country that is Uzbekistan. Next, in September 2016, India won the test match against which country by 197 runs in their historic 500th cricket test held in Kanpur? So again, option number one is the correct answer. That is New Zealand. Again, this question is important because it was the 500th test. The venue of the uh, test match was is also important as well as the opposite team. Next is World Tourism Day was observed on which date to raise awareness about importance of tourism. Yes, uh, so again option number one is correct. 27 September is the date on which World Tourism Day or International Tourism Day is celebrated. Next and the last question for the day is International Day of Peace or World Peace Day was observed across the world on which date to strengthen the ideals of peace both within and among all nations and people. So again option number one which seems to be our favorite option again that is the right answer. So uh, surprisingly we've ended the presentation before much 15 to 20 minutes before time. Uh, so I'll take all your queries as far as general knowledge is concerned. We'll utilize this time to the maximum. Right, so please uh, feel free to ask me any questions from general knowledge section. Uh, Jovanpreet, uh, uh, I, I pointed out earlier there were four medal, four medals which India won in the Paralympics uh, Games uh, 2016. Okay, Pankaj is asking, what is a single transferable voting system? So now, just let let me give you a brief idea about different types of voting systems that exist. The easiest one and that which we follow in the country is first past the post, first past the post system. So in this case, if they, let us say if there are three or four candidates uh, contesting a particular election, the candidate who wins the maximum number of votes is eventually declared the winner. So A may get 30%, B may get 20%, right? So that makes it uh, around 50, right? Uh, 75 and then right so in this case a will be declared the winner that is the candidate who has who's, who's won the maximum number of votes a different type of voting system is the single transferable voting system in this case let us say there are again four candidates contesting for a particular seat right now each voter right I would identify a preferential order for example if I am the voter I am the voter X I would say at rank 1 I want B to win so B is my first preference right at 2 I want A at 3 I want C and at 4 I want D right 
so people give their preferences uh, voters give their preferences to uh, all the candidates in this particular manner right so the, after the voting has been done the votes are counted right so for example as far as a is concerned he gets 40% of the votes of people who have marked him marked a as the first preference right so 40% of voters said that the first preference is a next for b 30% of the people have marked b as their first preference right that makes it 70 let us say 15 and 15 percent polled by c and d so guys please uh, uh, wait for me to uh, complete this query before you pose more right try and understand this particular concept first i'll answer all your queries right so the situation after the first round of counting this is the situation 40% first preference to A, 30% to B, 15% to C and 15% to D. Now in this particular system, a candidate has to win more than 50% of the votes. Now what will happen here is since C and D right, have the lowest first preference votes, what will happen is the votes for them would be cancelled and now the votes which have been cancelled and which marked C and D as their first preference, those votes would be seen and let us say a candidate, a voter Y, he gave C as the first preference and at the second preference he gave A, right? So for all such candidates who marked second preference as A, all these votes would be transferred to A. Similarly, if a, if a voter Z, mark first preference as C and second he placed candidate B. Again since C's votes are all cancelled these votes all such kind of votes will be transferred to candidate B. Now finally another polling another round of voting would be done. Now since there are only two candidates it is very possible that one of the candidate receives more votes as compared to others. So 40% in the first round plus votes like this in, in which voters mentioned uh, A as their second preference. They will be added to this. Let us say this would be 20% and this would make it 60% and A eventually would be declared the winner. So this is a system slightly complicated but this is the single transferable voting system and this type of voting is done in case of presidential elections in India. Okay, Surbhi is asking Maksese award, award is given for what purpose? Maksese award is uh, also, cons also uh, called often as Asia's Nobel Prize. It is generally given in the field of social service, arts, literatures, etc. Aditya is asking, should we have knowledge about all the UN organizations including their headquarters and chief etc. Aditya, it is uh, frankly speaking, it is not possible for one person to learn all the headquarters of all UN organizations. But certain important organizations are there. So if you uh, take a look at the uh, free online material that we provided on uh, gk.hitbullseye.com, you have a separate uh, booklet, right? Separate ebook on national and international organizations right so those are the important organizations that you have to have a brief idea about okay bhupendra is asking tricks for learning general governor bhupendra i think you're asking uh, governor general i'm not sure about the question can you uh, elaborate please okay sumiran uh, okay zenith saying uh, question five what uh, pankaj is asking what are statutory and constitutional body now, uh, a very good question, Pankaj. Constitutional bodies are those bodies that have been established by the Constitution of India. For example, UPSC, right? It has been mentioned in the Constitution of India around Article 300. Uh, around Article 300. So I don't remember the exact article, of course. Uh, another example is, of course, Finance Commission, Article 280. The Election Commission Article 324. So all the organizations that are mentioned in the Constitution are constitutional uh, bodies. Uh, 
next statutory body the the term statutory comes from the term statute so the term statutory comes from the word statute which stands for law now if there is, if there is an organization which has been established by a special act of the parliament that is a statutory body for example rbi which has been established by rbi act 1934 then of, of course we have uh, sebi sebi uh, was established through sebi act of 1992 right any organizations which have not been established under the constitution or there has been no special law passed by the parliament to establish an organization such organizations are known as non constitutional and non statutory bodies so for uh, the biggest uh, prom most prominent example here is niti ayog right so niti ayog does not on previously even planning commission uh, they are not mentioned in the constitution and also no law has been passed by the parliament to create them okay bhupendra i am not aware of a you know trick to remember the governor generals uh, the best trick in uh, general knowledge for me is revision so revise as many po times as possible as you can right keshav statutory right and legal right uh, these are actually same legal the term is related to law statutory also is related to law so both rights are the same okay so meera what was the purpose of heart of asia conference heart of asia conference held in amritsar so basically the idea is these are parallel channels of diplomacy uh, this was organized by ngos and private individuals and private organizations uh, the basic idea is to increase uh, peace uh, peace and harmony uh, in the in these countries next question is bhupendra what is open defecation okay bhupendra open defecation is uh, going in the open area for uh, your uh, toilet purposes right keshav uh, right to vote is legal legal but why not a statutory right uh, keshav i think you are confusing something right to vote is a legal right but not a constitutional right or even a fundamental right right it is a legal as well as statutory right in india pankaj is asking anti defection law so uh, anti defection law is related to uh, is is actually uh, dis, is di it discourages uh, changing of parties by mps and mlas for political gains so for example what so earlier what used to happen was let us say no political party in a particular state or in general elections has won a majority right and let us say the largest party for example party x has won 100 seats and requires only 5 more members for it to gain majority so what it would do the party x would give money or uh, lure uh, the mps from other parties by giving them money or by promising them very good portfolios right so what would happen is they would give money or lure them in good portfolios and get five to form a government right now in order to stop this particular practice this is this is a bad practice to stop this practice anti defection laws were passed through a constitutional amendment i am forgetting the exact constitution amendment but it was in the year 1985 i think 51st constitutional amendment act of 1985 but do i am not sure of this particular figure but please do check it right now anti defection laws right 51st uh, constitutional amendment act 1985 this added schedule 10 which contained the anti defection law so it restricted the mps and mlas from uh, changing their parties after winning uh, elections from another party okay i think 52nd yes 52nd constitution amendment act 1985 which added schedule 10 that is anti defection laws sema is asking what is emergency proclamation the term that is proclamation of emergency is used only in the case of national emergency as given in article 352 right now as i said earlier national emergency can be announced due to two reasons war or external aggression right and second reason is armed rebellion right earlier this term did not exist 
this or uh, the original constituted constitution had the term internal disturbance so internal disturbance is a, was a very vague term and it was believed that was misused by prime minister indira gandhi to proclaim a national emergency in the year 1975-76 right so that is why this term was deleted and replaced by armed rebellion while the 44th constitutional amendment act 1978 now when a national emergency is declared the constitution of india beca- uh, behaves like a unitary state right so the distribution of power or division of power between center and state is suspended and all the powers are concentrated in the center or the parliament okay bhupendra is asking pension for regulatory and development authority yes you right bhupendra shraddha is asking what is sebi uh, sebi is securities and exchange board of india so it is the primary regulator of uh, stock markets and other uh, pri- uh, primary and secondary stock markets in india right uh, any more question guys before we end the session we are at the end of the uh, session right now right uh, thank you so much i f- hope you find this uh, session helpful in your preparation in the next class i'll be taking up current affairs from the next two months of course september and october 2016 and also we'll be covering important questions from history right thank you so much